Hello there, my name is Intero Sinjani and I'm a technician and thanks for tuning in to the Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel where we share the different aspects of oxygen concentrator assessment, use and maintenance. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell. Today I'm joined by my colleague Operation Kunda and I'm a biomedical engineer and today we're going to discuss how to troubleshoot a control board from an air cell oxygen concentrator. Without further ado, let's dive in. So there are three generations of the air cell control board. The first generation uses through hole mounting technology to mount the components on the PCB. As you can see, all the components have leads that go through a hole and protrude to the bottom where they're soldered. In the first generation, the board also has LEDs that correspond to the solenoid valves on the concentrator. And these are the LEDs, as you can see, they're protruding to the bottom. So that's for the first generation. In the second generation, um, AirSip moved from the through hole mounting technology to surface mounting technology. So most of the components here are surface mount and only the power supply components are through hole. We will talk about the power supply components later on in the video. But as you can see, these are the surface mount components. Uh, looking at the bottom of the board, as you can see, it's much smooth and cleaner than the first generation. Uh, on this board, uh, they, there are also LEDs that correspond to the solenoid valves on the oxygen concentrator. These LEDs are also surface mount, just like most of the components on the board. And these are the LEDs that are corresponding to the solenoid valves. And for the third and the more current generation of the airship boards, uh, they're still using the surface mount technology for most of the components on the board and only through hole technology for the power supply components, just like in the previous generation. The main difference between the third generation and the second generation is that in the third generation, airship decided to get rid of the LEDs that show the solenoid valve that is on on the concentrator so on this board there are no leds just the transistors that control the solenoid valves on the oxygen concentrator so as you can see this is the bottom of the board again it's surface mount and it's much cleaner and smooth compared to the first generation now we'll talk about the components that usually get damaged on these boards and how you can identify that they have been damaged. So most of the components that get damaged on the board are the power supply components, as I mentioned earlier. So when we're talking about the power supply components on these boards, uh, we're talking about firstly, the varistor. So this is the red component right here, the varistor. This is a P27 5L20 varistor. And it's mainly used to protect the board from power surges. So if there's a power surge, the varista will blow up, thereby cutting off the current flow from the rest of the board, thereby protecting all the other components. After the varista, we have these two resistors right here. These two resistors are one ohm, one watt resistors, and they're also used to protect the board from uh, power surges. After the resistors, we have a capacitor. This capacitor is a 100 nanofarads, 310 volts capacitor and it's used to store charge on the board and it also blows up when it is damaged so you can actually see it that it is damaged and after the capacitor we have the bridge rectifier right there and the main function of the bridge rectifier is to convert AC voltage to DC voltage which is then fed to all the other components on the board. So in order to troubleshoot and identify the damaged components on the board, you need some tools. And one of the tools that you need is a digital multimeter. This is a digital multimeter. You need this to measure the voltage, the current, the resistance and the continuity of the components on the boards. So after you have identified the damaged component on the board, 
you will need to remove it and that's when the solder sucker comes in so you use the solder sucker to remove the component together with the soldering iron right here they'll go hand in hand um, if you also have a soldering stand like the one that i have right here you can also use it to make sure that you hold the board firmly and be able to remove the component without any problems another tool that you need is the solder wire so you need you use the solder wire together with the soldering iron to make sure that the new component that you're putting on the board is placed firmly and does not move or is uh, soldered tightly on the board so assuming that you have a, a resistor that's damaged on the board and you wanted to remove it and measure the resistance of the resistor this is how you're going to do it i will demonstrate by removing a resistor on one of the boards and then measuring the resistance and then we can get to see if the the resistor is okay or it's damaged so firstly i take my soldering stand if you have one of these you can also use it as well so i have placed the board on the soldering stand as you can see and we are trying to remove one of these two resistors right here so i will just turn it around so the resistors the legs of the resistors are from here to here so we just have to remove one and measure it so people do it differently i usually start by adding some introducing some new solda on the old solder it makes it easier when you're removing the component so here's my soldering iron uh, hitting up the the joint and then introduce some solder on there so do the same on the other leg i'll get my soda sucker <clears throat> hit it up still disordering So we have removed uh, most of the soda right there. So right now we have removed most of the soda from the resistor, but it's still uh, a bit firmly attached to the board. So what I usually do is I'll be hitting up the resistor on the bottom while sort of like shaking it and getting it out of the holes that that, that works for me. So we're just going to do that right now. So I'll be hitting up one of the legs and then try to pull it from the other side. So usually these things get hot. So if you have like a set of pliers or something that you can use, it's advised to use that. But I'll just do this. And as you can see, again, slowly, get it out so the resistor was right there and this is the resistor that we have removed so right now we have to test the resistance and see if it's damaged or it is okay so as you remember these are supposed to be one ohm one watt resistors so we want the value that we get from the multimeter to be around one ohm if it's not that that value then the resistor is damaged so i'll just move the soldering stand this is my digital multimeter right here and then i'll have to place it in resistance mode so i'll move this to 200 this is 200 ohms so it's 1 to 200 that's why i'll be able to 
measure my resistance. So I'll place it on the table. So this is our resistor. So I'll just make sure the probes and as you can see we're getting a value of 1.4 so 1.4 is around 1 1 ohm so I'll conclude that this resistor is okay it's not damaged so if you're trying to measure the resistors make sure you measure both so you also have to disorder the other one and see if it's okay and then you can be able to make a decision either to replace it or put it back that means that is not the component that is damaged on the board so right now i'll get my soldering stand which has the board on there and then i have to put back the resistor the holes that i used for mounting the the resistor have some solder in it so i still have to continue desoldering and make sure that the holes are okay i don't have any soda on there so i'll get my soda sucker once again and my soldering iron and just make sure that the soldering iron goes on the hole just to heat it up and get rid of that extra soda that's on there soda wire uh, do that to the other hole as well right now at least the, the holes are clear enough that you can insert the the resistor on there without any problems this is our resistor once again i'll just place it on the board as it was before so the reason why we had to to remove the resistor from the board is because it's not advised to measure any component on the board you you have to remove it from there and measure it on its own to ensure that you get the right value and the right readings. So I'm going to just try to put it back. Uh, yeah, so that's my resistor right there. I just have to make sure I put some soda wire on there and to make sure that it's held on the board firmly. So I'll get my soda wire and my soldering iron. I will hit up the joint. And add my soda wire. Right there. Uh, go to the other side as well. Hit it up. And some soda wire on there so so again I'll soda on this part because that's how it was just making sure that the, the resistor is placed uh, in the right way as it was before so I'll also add some soda wire on there and add some more on there and that should do it the resistor is back in place and yeah right now you can try to put the board back in the concentrator and see how it performs other than that thank you very much